Check us out, this is Maestro Fresh West, you're on Breaking Records Radio. What's up, this is Demrich. Jamie Madge Rock. Man, this is your man's Obi Trice. This is Adlib. Yo, what up, this is Specs One. This is Fresh K. Hard Rock's the motherfucking Scrat MC. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio out here. This is Breaking Records Radio. Check them out, man. Breaking Records Radio and the place to be. You know what it is, your homie Maloney. And we got the... The most legendary hip hop artist from Canada, right here in the flesh, Maestro Fresh West. God bless, thank you. And I've been waiting to get this guy on the program for thank years. Thank you, sir. Thank and you, sir. and um, one thing I have to say to you is that your album, Built to Last, to me is top 10 best hip hop albums well, of you. all time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And one comparison I make a lot of times on the show, I'm sure you probably never listened to it, but. You are the Rakim of Canada. God bless, man. Rakim to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the, of the, of the Painful album last week, July 7th, man. Yeah. You know, so respect. And it all started, so while I know you and Chris, who is technically my boss, you guys got along yesterday yeah, together. That's my How do you guys know Chris? How do you, what's your Chris relationship? I know him from Fleming and Park days, man. From Flemmo up days. There. And just happened, those guys helped me out with my demo tapes, man. Because I ain't from Flemmo, but I was always up there. Those guys would help me with my demos anytime I needed. My man S. Blank, uh, my man Henry, my man Jell. And Jell was always, I know uh, Rock, so you call him Rock, I know him as Jell, DJ Jell, man. You know, as a matter of fact, the album came out before mine, 1986. Eastside Posse. Eastside Posse came out in 86 before Mission Me dropped with Scott Rock in 87. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So there's history in the hood. You know what I mean? So. Fleming and Park, man, have always gave me um, support when it came to my demo tapes, my music, and, and, and what happens. So, to see him evolve and transcend to what he's doing now is like... And I remember seeing footage of you back on uh, television back in the day. And uh, built, um, so when you dropped Built to Last, like I was like, you gotta keep in mind right now, I'm a 27 year old. Yes, so when you dropped Built to Last, I was a little kid. And Stick to My Vision was the first hip hop song I ever fell in love with. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And um, when I got older, I got into listening to like that whole album, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to me personally, like I said, top 10 best hip hop albums of all time. Thank you. The lyricism you display on Thank that you. album, the beats on that, Scam? Yeah, Scam is a little work on that. Scam is, is work on that. Scam's like one of these unknown dudes that will never find. Now he did Boiling Point for Concrete Mob. He's, he's, got, he's got a, it's a legendary track right there in the city. Oh my god. Um, like, have you ever heard of Boiling Point? No! You better heard of Boiling Point. That's like, that's one of the top 10 Greatest underground hip hop song ever out in the city. Say a word. Boiling Point by Concrete Mob. Concrete Mob consists of Scam, Deuce Deuce, and I forget my next man's name, man. Blackjack. Most three Say a word, eh? Because yeah. and, and for the four years I've been doing the radio show, Scam is one dude I really wanted to interview yeah. because he produced some of my favorite records off that album. Yeah, but like, he it, produced it, some it, of my favorite Bishop Gante records. Yeah. Like Scam on the beats is crazy. Well, like, points better than all the shit he did for all of us, man. That's his choice. I'm the nastiest, filthiest, unsterilized, contaminated Ooh. rhymes of the century. Yo, Ooh. bro. Yeah, I was nice with that. I was nice. Yo, was you were nice. Yeah, nice as yeah. understatement. Ooh. I forgot I wrote that shit. Ah, I'm nastier than Joey Wiley's sister in a porno flick. Ooh. I'm on the rap road of I spoke to that just like the Morier. Yo, yeah. Wes. That was dope. Wes. Yeah. Crazy. Good. You good? Good. Yeah, all right. We're just doing an interview. Right yeah, sorry, my G, sorry. But yo, honestly, that album is honestly one of the most influential hip hop yeah. albums to me Thank of you. all time. Thank you. And um, that's why I've really wanted to get in contact with you for a long time. Thank you, sir. But I mean, like, um, obviously, your legacy goes way beyond Stick to Your Vision and Built to Last album. You had the first platinum Canadian hip hop record. Let your backbone slide. And if I'm not mistaken, I seen footage of you on television back in the day, and you record that when you were in college. Nah, uh, something like that, yeah. Like, and that, and that was recorded in 89, 1989. I was 19, I was 20 years old. Yeah, man, so it was a long time ago. Well, shout out to Steve B, LMR Records, and, and Much Music. Much and Electric Circus, man. Back when Much Music was still keeping it. Yeah, One yeah, hour. Electric Circus is how I got my record deal, man. Say what? Yeah, before Chef, for Stevie B to come to Toronto, there was no electric circus. None of that transition would have happened for me to um, the way it did. What? Yeah, so that's that's a part of the history right there. You got history in the hood, man. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And that's why you notice like a lot of the people at, at our CBC. I get a lot of love there too because a lot of people from CBC used to work on much music. They just they, they didn't rock bullets no more. They just, you know, <laughs> Got on corporate, just walked down John Street. Somebody see me and bring some 
back to the good old days when they were young and they were all, you know, pioneers and so well yeah. back in the so. Oh man. And then just recently, because I follow you on Instagram as well, I seen that uh, you and Showbiz back in the studio back in like what, 92 it was? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So what's your relationship with Showbiz? It's one of my most um, influential producers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Between him, K Cut and Large Professor. I was just gonna say K Cut. K-Cup produced conducting things, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, did he? Yeah. Oh, shit! K-Cup produced conducting things for me, so I knew a large professor, he was helping out with the drum programming. So that was a male. As a matter of fact, while they were mixing that album, no, as a matter of fact, while they were recording my album, they were doing the fine-tuned touches of their album. So all I was hearing right. about when I was in New York, all they were talking about was this kid named Nasty Now. So I'm getting goosebumps right now. Holy because I just remember rinsing that verse over and over and over in K-Cut's apartment in Corona, Queens, man. Nasty Nas. They just kept rinsing that because they were mixing that while they were starting to do my album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so you got the winds of Nas before anybody even of Nas. fucking knew Nas was. Nasty Nas, man. Rebel to America. This murder on cause on the stairs. Are you kidding me? I'm getting ah! So like me, me being right here and like, you know, large professor, I haven't seen him in years, you know what I'm saying? So, so I imagine that's why you're here right now. Well me and K-Cut is like, that's my homie what? too. Well, we, cause we're here to interview actually main source, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why we're here and yeah. I was gonna bring you up to them. So it's a blessing dude, dude, for dude. me to actually be able to talk I was talk there, to you. right there, while they were rinsing, live at the barbecue. Oh my God! Nas came to the gates. <laughs> Dr. Uh, Vest said, yo, Maestro Fresh West, meet Nasty Nas. Nas was like twisted, he had twisted, he was twisted his, hey, how you doing, son? He was twisted his, his, his uh, cause he had those twist twists, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He took his twist with one hand, give me love with the other hand, Nasty Nas, was like 16. Oh my God. And, you know, I mean, I'll never forget that because to see him like years later, come up with Illmatic, it just changed the game of what that did for hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So, Sort of ice tea and pulp again. Yeah, man, that's, that's part of the game, man. It's a part of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Me and Showbiz are gonna get back to him too. DITC. That's the fam, you know what I'm saying? That's my, my, my hip hop brother. He just celebrated his birthday last week, so I give him a shout out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a blessing to be here still, man. I'm 49 now, man. And you know what I'm saying? A lot of cats ain't making it in the city, you know, man. A lot of educated rapper from UTFO. That's the first group I ever opened up for ever. Fresh, known as the government, known as whatever they call it now. Yeah. Right? He passed away. The next big group I went was Beastie Boys. Oh, shit! Before I even heard of white rappers, so we didn't know what they looked like. They didn't have videos. Right? MCA was the first dude I seen jump in the crowd. He, he passed away too. See what I'm saying? So that's why you gotta celebrate life, celebrate the genre of music, celebrate the, the culture, for lack of better words, and you know, celebrate life, man. That's why we make sure this here. like, yo. Classified is my second favorite Canadian rap artist. But you, you have, you, you proved the trials of time. You were the first Latin Canadian artist. The music you dropped back then was flawless. I have the fucking um, Symphony in Effect. I have that on the set. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you were the first Canadian artist to break those batteries. But then when you did the build to last, you rebroke those batteries. A decade later. First of all, shout out to my classified because you mentioned him. But um, in terms of Drake, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I remember him on an interview saying, you know what, a lot of people's top 10 maestro moments would not be his favorite maestro song. But his favorite one is 416905 because he said, Oh shit! Oh, shit. Like he was saying, like, yo, man. He was one of the first dudes to rap the area code. Yeah, I seen that in that interview. So I was You're like, right. you know. We got a mutual respect for that, you know what I'm saying? It's like evolution, it's like how New York City got their hip-hop history and LA and, and like Virginia and Texas and Florida and every, every every other region in America. Guess what? Canada, especially Toronto, we got our own little history too. 
Yeah. That's true, you And the problem with Toronto hip hop history, which is why I love to talk to people like you and Chris and things like that, is that I feel like it's not well documented. The history's there, but it's not well documented. Hey, all I know was Candle 150. July 1st, you know who I was? I was in oh, yeah, July 1st. Yeah. July 1st, I was in LA, Hollywood. And Nathan the Phillips the next. Yeah, the Canadian consulate flew me down to perform for Candy. We got a thousand Canadians over there. I jumped on a plane. Nathan Phillips Square the next day. Yeah. Mitchie me and the Dream Warriors. And we wanted to be there. So, so to me, to me, that's like we are documenting history too. I'm on a timeline wall. I don't know if you know that, if you know about this. So I got a timeline wall of all the kids in the 1800s. Up in 2017, and then you see like Joe Carter, what he did for the Blue Jays. The only Toronto rapper on the Walk of Fame. Yeah, no, but not, not even no, but the timeline in 1989. My Street Fresh Rise Rock, let you back. I'm a part of the Toronto timeline in City Hall. Oh, oh word. Dope. Yeah, dope. that's pretty fresh. That's you know what I'm dope. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's right. That's crazy. So to me, like I tell people, we don't make records, we make history. No, and I totally agree. I just feel like the yeah. history yeah. needs to be more well known. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like not enough people pay homage to history company. and Yo. wish this is city hall. Wicked, man. But so you listen. know what? I would love to get you on the We're going to do it even sometime. more, man. You know what? Maybe we do with my main source, part two. Yeah, All no right, doubt. All right? Thank you for your time. Yeah, we'll do it again. Okay. Breaking fucking records radio.